The man who opened his trunk had no idea he was secretly recording her. In the early hours of May 17, 2020, Seedley was cloaked in darkness, the city still in quiet. Anthony Sims, a 35-year-old black delivery driver, was on his usual route, heading towards a 7-Eleven convenience store to make an early morning delivery. His truck rumbled along the empty streets, its cargo area filled with supplies for the store. As he approached the intersection of First Avenue and Cherry Street, he noticed his headlights were off and quickly switched them on. Unbeknownst to Sims, Lieutenant Rebecca Brown, an acting lieutenant with the Seattle Police Department, SPD, was patrolling the area. Brown, from her patrol car, observed Sims's vehicle and noted the initial absence of headlights. She ran the vehicle's license plate through the police database and received a hit indicating that the plate might belong to a stolen vehicle, reported in Snohomish County. Brown radioed in the potential stolen vehicle, escalating the situation. Sims, unaware of the brewing trouble, parked his truck outside the 7-Eleven and stepped out to begin his delivery. At that moment, Brown activated her patrol car's emergency lights and drawing her weapon, ordered Sims back into his vehicle over the public address system. Sims complied, his heart pounding as he returned to his truck. Within minutes, the quiet street turned chaotic. Seven additional officers arrived, surrounding Sims's vehicle with their weapons drawn. Some officers pointed their guns directly at him, while others held theirs in a less threatening position. The high-risk vehicle stop was in full effect. Sims, sitting in his truck, was terrified, but maintained his composure. He knew the drill. Remain calm, comply, and hope for the best. What the officers didn't know was that Sims had a dash camera installed in his truck, which was recording the entire incident. He also discreetly started recording on his phone, capturing audio and video evidence from the encounter. Lieutenant Brown approached Sims's truck cautiously, weapon drawn. Keep your hands where I can see them, she commanded. Sims did as he was told, his hands shaking as he placed them on the steering wheel. Brown instructed him to hand over his keys, which Sims did, and then ordered him to exit the vehicle. As Sims stepped out, hands still raised, Brown instructed another officer to search the truck. Sims protested. Why are you searching my vehicle? I haven't done anything wrong. His voice was steady but tinged with fear and frustration. We have reason to believe this vehicle is stolen, Brown replied curtly. Sims knew this was a mistake. His truck was registered and the plates were valid. He tried to explain, but his words fell on deaf ears. The officers were intent on their mission. One officer took the keys from Brown and moved to the back of the truck, opening the trunk. Sims stood helplessly, surrounded by armed officers as they rummaged through his belongings. Despite their thorough search, they found nothing incriminating. Sims's paperwork was in order, and there were no signs of illegal activity. After several tense minutes, Brown received a call on her radio. The dispatcher confirmed that there had been a mistake. The license plate was not stolen. Brown's face tightened as she processed the information. She turned to Sims, her expression hard to read. It seems there was a mix-up with the license plate, she said, her tone devoid of apology. Sims was furious but restrained himself. Can I go now? He asked, his voice controlled but firm. Brown nodded and the officers began to lower their weapons and retreat. Sims got back into his truck, still recording, and drove away, his mind racing with thoughts of what had just transpired. In the following days, Sims replayed the encounter over and over in his mind. He knew that he had been targeted because of his race. He decided to take action. He contacted an attorney and filed a civil rights lawsuit against the Seattle Police Department, alleging racial profiling and an illegal search of his vehicle. The case quickly gained traction, drawing the attention of local and national media. Sims's dash camera footage and phone recordings were powerful evidence, showing the unnecessary use of force and the blatant disregard for his rights. The footage was shared widely, sparking outrage and calls for accountability. U.S. District Judge Tana Lin presided over the case. In her review, she found significant evidence to support Sims's claims. The SPD had no policy governing high-risk vehicle stops, a glaring omission that left room for abuse. Judge Lynn highlighted that a reasonable jury could conclude that the officer's actions were influenced by Sims's race. The city's failure to train its officers on the use of force during a high-risk vehicle stop amounts to deliberate indifference to constitutional rights.
Judge Lynn wrote in her ruling. She rejected the city's motion to dismiss the claims, stating that the matter of biased policing was one for a jury to decide. The trial was set, and Sims's case became a focal point in discussions about police reform in Seattle. His attorneys, supported by the American Civil Liberties Union of Washington, argued that his experience was emblematic of broader issues within the SPD, including the disproportionate targeting of black individuals. The trial revealed troubling patterns in the SPD's practices. Data showed that black people were far more likely to be stopped at gunpoint by Seattle police than their white counterparts, despite making up only about 7% of the city's population. Additionally, white individuals were more likely to be armed during these encounters, yet it was black individuals who faced more aggressive police actions. During the proceedings, Lieutenant Brown testified that she couldn't determine the driver's race when she initiated the stop. However, Judge Lynn noted that Brown didn't activate her emergency lights or draw her weapon until Sims exited the vehicle, suggesting that the high-risk tactic may have been partly motivated by Sims's race. The courtroom was filled with tension as Sims took the stand. He recounted the fear and humiliation he felt during the stop, describing how he had been treated like a criminal without cause. His voice wavered at times, but his resolve was clear. He wanted justice not just for himself, but for all those who had faced similar injustices. The defense tried to argue that the officer's actions were necessary for their safety, but Judge Lynn was not convinced. She pointed out that there was no justification for the search of Sims's trunk without a warrant, labeling it as an unlawful action. The jury deliberated for several days before reaching a verdict. They found the city liable for the illegal search and determined that Sims had been a victim of racial profiling. The jury awarded Sims significant damages, recognizing the emotional and psychological toll the incident had taken on him. The verdict was a watershed moment, prompting renewed calls for police reform in Seattle. Community leaders and activists rallied around Sims, using his case as a catalyst for change. The city and the U.S. Justice Department faced mounting pressure to address the systemic issues within the SPD and ensure that officers were held accountable for their actions. In the aftermath of the trial, Seattle's Office of Police Accountability recommended the development of a policy to govern high-risk vehicle stops emphasizing the need for comprehensive training on the use of force. Police Chief Adrian Diaz, initially resistant to the idea, eventually conceded to the demands, acknowledging that change was necessary to rebuild trust within the community. Sims's ordeal and the subsequent trial underscored the ongoing struggle for racial justice and police accountability in America. His bravery in standing up against the injustice he faced shone a light on the systemic issues that needed to be addressed. For Sims, the victory was bittersweet. While he had achieved justice in the courtroom, the experience had left lasting scars. He continued to advocate for change, hoping that his case would prevent others from enduring similar ordeals. His story served as a powerful reminder of the importance of vigilance and the need to hold those in power accountable for their actions. In the end, Sims's secret recordings had not only exposed the truth but also sparked a movement for change. His fight for justice became a beacon of hope, inspiring others to stand up and demand their rights in the face of adversity. And as Seattle moved forward, the lessons learned from his case would not be forgotten. The story of Anthony Sims highlights critical lessons about racial profiling, the misuse of police power, and the importance of accountability. It underscores how systemic issues within law enforcement can lead to the unjust treatment of individuals based on race. Sims's experience illustrates the need for comprehensive training and policies to prevent abuse and ensure that officers act within the bounds of the law. The story also demonstrates the power of documentation and legal action in seeking justice and reform. By standing up for his rights, Sims not only sought justice for himself, but also sparked a broader conversation about police practices and racial bias. His bravery and the subsequent legal battle emphasized the importance of vigilance and advocacy in addressing systemic injustices. As we reflect on Sims's ordeal, we must ask ourselves, what steps can we take in our communities to ensure accountability and fairness in law enforcement? How can we support those who have been wronged by systemic biases? 
Your thoughts and actions can contribute to meaningful change. Share your ideas and experiences below.